the network. What's going on? My name is Corey, and I am a music marketer. And today I have a very special guest with me, my guy, Evan. Evan is a really dope dude, man. He is an elite merchandiser, one of the best merchandisers in the game, you know, uh, having merchandise for all of LVRN's roster. So some of the biggest artists like Summer Walker, Dram, Black, and just the rest of the roster. Yeah, they have a really dope roster over there. Um, he is also a an author now with his book coming out September 1st. Is that the correct date? September 1st. Yes, sir. September yes, 1st, sir. Man. Ready. So an official author, bro, congrats, man, with his book Paces that really just goes deep into how the mindset of a person can affect their, their business decisions and just like the decisions they're making in life. And uh, I'm, I'm really hoping y'all get as much value out of this conversation as I've gotten from him. I'm sure Sean's gotten from just the conversations we've had with you, man. So appreciate you, bro, for joining me today. Appreciate y'all having me. Happy to be here. Yeah, man. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. So I'm real big on, you know, I know in the music industry or entertainment in general, we tend to get lumped into like our job titles, but I'm really big on, you know, everyone kind of has a story that, you know, tells how they got to where they are, man. So if you could just, you know, what is your background like? Like what led you to the position that you're in now? And, you know, what are, what are some of the things that, that you were interested in that got you to where you are? For sure, man. Like, it's always interesting, like, because I try to answer this question differently every time in a certain sense, but still end up at the same place, right? Mm. Uh, recently, I, I was explaining even the story and what made me even care so much about fashion and merchandising. And a big mm. reason was because I was ridiculed in school. Like, I was okay. made fun of because I was the kid that had to wear the same pants three times a week, you know, because we, I, I wore a uniform. I, I wasn't used to having my own style or anything of that nature. So yeah, me yeah. just being laughed at, right, out of necessity, it was like, nah, this is not going to happen no more. I was always wanting to fight. So I was like, you know what? Nah, I'm going I'm to get fly now. Yeah. So that was like just the, the desire to want to, to wanna understand fashion and merchandising mm -hmm. just period because it's just like I was tired of being laughed at, bro. Yeah. So um, as, I, as I went into college, um, I was big and in, in just getting fly, you know, dressing up, you know, wearing – the flyest thing, the the Gucci, the 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 designers, the mm. even the, just the regular plain tees that just had very great quality. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Once I graduated college, I, I studied public relations. However, I did not go into an agency or corporate or a nonprofit entity to do PR. I went and worked for a merchandising company instead, and that's where I learned the business. Mm. From packing boxes to folding the shirts to cold calling to inventory. You name it, I did everything there, and that was really my foundation for being able to succeed in doing everything that I'm doing now at LVRN. Gotcha, so that gotcha, was gotcha. that was kind of like the transition in, in in that sense. You know what I'm saying? What type of merchandising was that? Was that first job? Like what? what was wholesale. The... Okay. Gotcha, wholesale. Gotcha. Yep. So I wasn't necessarily on e on an e-commerce team because back in 2014 that was still bubbling. Of course, like it was existing. Not it's not as wild as it is today in 2020. But back then, people still went to the malls to shop like yeah. in droves. You know what I'm saying? So being yeah. able to sell to the stores, I was traveling all over the country to the different trade shows, the, the magics, the agendas, the street scenes, um, all of these different types of shows and, and just sponging and learning the business and what it took to be successful in it. Okay. Okay. That's dope. That's, that sounds like, a, like the perfect place to start. Because like you said, with wholesale, you literally get to see all aspects of it, even e-commerce, you know, as, as much as like uh, from what it's developed into and how important it is. I don't know, man, I feel like wholesale is like the perfect place, like I said, to start and learn all of that. So, I mean, is so what, what would you say were some of the foundational things that you took out of that job that you still use in your current merchandising? Like, you know, what's some of the more important things you got out of that? For sure. Something that, just across any business period is keeping the product first and mm -hmm. understanding presentation. So again, the first thing that I did when I was an intern was pack and fold boxes. Okay. Right. And the biggest thing as, as it relates to just the box, right. That's how someone is going to receive the product. So mm -hmm. if you just receive something and it's beat up or it's, it's not aesthetically pleasing and you open it up and the shirt is wrinkled or whatever the case may be nine times out of 10, you're going to look at them like, are you really going to purchase again? Right. Yeah. The perception, like the product is not right. So just that specifically, I take that into my 
situation now and just just with everything because it's like if the product is not right you're not going to have repeat customers you're not going to retain these people that are spending money with you so always keep the product first okay that's like the that. that's the biggest one like period i like that i like that so so you've been a part of merchandising for well let me ask you this first so for the artists that you're that you're doing with now at what point um, were you introduced to their merchandising teams? Was it was it something that you have been working on since kind of like the inception of their music careers? Or was there like a point where they were like, all right, now it makes sense for Evan to come in and do his thing? So that's a good question. So as it relates to merchandising period, so we have the merchandise division. And mm -hmm. if, if anyone remembers like Black when the first designs as it relates to the bear that had the bars, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we were doing no shirts, right? So it's not like I'm an outside entity. I'm on salary with the company. So it wasn't like I was selected to, you know what I'm saying? No, I'm hired yeah, yeah. on board and, and I work with the team, with the management team, with the business managers, with the, with the producers and everything to make sure that the product gets done. So since inception, honestly, like since, you know, our artists rolling out merch, it flows through this process like where it touches, you know, um, the merch division. Right. So, so I'm not sure. Well, I was like, so let me, let me well, cause that makes me want to rephrase it. So let me ask this then. At, mm -hmm. at what point in, so when LVRN brings a new artist through, you know, I know LVRN is like super huge in like artist development. Like y'all catch a talent when like, only like a hundred people in Atlanta know them, you know what I'm saying? And y'all build them up. So at what, what are the stages or at what point do you start having those conversations with the artists y'all are bringing through about even developing a merch? You know, is it like a, is it like a certain metric? Like when you hit, you know, X amount of emails, is it when, you know, is it like just like when the fans start demanding for it? Is there, is there a metric that you even go by for that? No, I think that's more so. so no, what I'm yeah, no, that's a better, I, I can understand your question a little bit more now. So no, there's not necessarily a metric because we want to implement merchandise in all of our clients. Like okay. we want everyone to have a strategy so it starts now from inception like we have a new head of um, creative as far as designs and he deals in and speaks to the artists on the type of things that they like mm -hmm. and then he communicates with with i and then how we're going to get it done so okay. it's not necessarily a metric or like followers or this no everyone should have a merchandise strategy even if you're not signed you should have a merchandise strategy because can you go on tour right now absolutely yeah. not can you do a meet and right now absolutely not like, what can you do? Oh, you could open up a web store and sell your merchandise that affects your brand where you could get more eyeballs on you. So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah there's, there's no metric. There's no starts now. I uh, got you. We'll even tell like, our sometimes we'll be like, man, you're spending all this money like on yourself. Like you might as well have merch because, you know, all it takes is like a couple of T-shirts sold and you made your money back, you know, or like a Shopify store is like $30. You know, you sell like two T-shirts a month. Like you at least made your money to recoup and keep going, you know. Um, so, so have, have there been any particular products or items that you've seen that have made for like good merch? Like, you know, like, yo, no matter what the case is, like, this is always going to sell or is it truly like a unique, uh, case by case situation, depending on like what the artist fans want? That's a good question too. So in my opinion, from what I've seen just across the board, when you're able to wear a piece or something that you brand that the artist actually loves like just mm. put it this way right like the chance three hat it's a staple right yeah. so people are going to buy it because it's authentic to chance he wears it so naturally the people are going to want to be like him you know what i'm saying so yeah. if as an artist you know whatever piece you support or whatever piece that you're going to wear or most openly and, and and rock with nine times out of ten that's going to be the best seller outside yeah. of just if the design is just super dope. So like even like this shirt I have on right now, like still pronounced black. Like the first shirt design that we did of this one was black pronounced black because people were spelling his name wrong. We did a whole yeah. campaign behind it, right? So yeah. naturally, this is what people saw. So it's like naturally I rock with black and I want people to pronounce his name correctly. So I'm gonna wear this shirt. Even if you had no idea who black was, now it's a conversation starter. Yeah. So being able to you know create these pieces or, or be part of these teams to create these campaigns it's been dope because like i'll be in amsterdam and i'll see somebody wearing a shirt like that and it's just like wow i had a hand in, in getting this done yeah. that they have this shirt on right now it's pretty cool 
Yeah, that's fine. Um, however, back to the question again, like whatever you support, whatever piece you want the people to wear and you have the message behind it and it's authentic, nine times out of 10, is that's what's going to go. Yeah, so I, I, I like the, the, the key thing you said is like authenticity to the base. So, because like, I've seen some artists get away with like some like crazy merch stuff just because like their base likes it. You know, I think Ari Linux was one of the first artists that I saw selling like bonnets and sleeping cat like sleeping masks as merch. And I remember when I saw it, I was like, man, that's it's weird. But then when you think about her base, you're like, damn, it makes perfect sense. Like her base right. will go to the store and buy bonnets and sleeping masks. Why not right. be the one to be the one supplying that? You know, so like you said, why not give them a conversation piece to go like, oh shit, you have a Ari Linux face uh, sleeping mask or something. So. I always think, yeah, that's dope. The whole authenticity thing. And I also feel like that opens up the door to just more unique merch ideas. You know, like it, it helps them stray away from just the t-shirt hoodie hat combo, you know, that we always see. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And that's why, like with, with Black, we're rolling out a hot sauce. Super yeah. authentic to him. It makes sense, right? Like, yeah. Fans want it. Like, so. Well, y'all still just selling? another example. Y'all still selling the hot sauce? It's about to go back on sale. So get ready. Yeah. Perfect, bro. Appreciate that, man. <laughs> okay, man. So um, I know another thing you mentioned earlier uh, was the trade show. So like, how open are these trade shows? Are these things that just anyone can pick up and go to? Or is it something that you like, you just have to end into it and that's how you got into them? So through my internship, turning into mm -hmm. job, they, this is, since it's wholesale, this is how the money gets made for the most part, where a large majority of the money gets made, right? So at these trade shows, the Mac trade show, Agenda in Vegas, Magic in Vegas project, this is the central location where all these buyers from all these different stores all around the world come to, to see the new products for whatever season is next. So right now we're in August. So uh, spring of 2021 would be getting showed right now, Okay. right? For, for most brands. Fall is already done. Fall was being showed in um, in February. So from a seasonal standpoint, right? So being at these shows, you have access to see what's coming, what's new, what's happening, who's there, uh, what stores are, 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 you know, spending and, and things of that nature. So it was a natural next step for me as a sales associate or, you know, just moving up from intern to understanding sales. So yeah. understanding what items are going to sell in different demographics, you know, really talking and building relationships with the buyers and being able to provide support. Mm -hmm. So it was at these shows that I'm seeing the bigger brands like the Pumas, the, uh, the Akus, the Hustle Gang, like just in, in, in certain lanes, because I was more so in the streetwear and the sportswear. But you're seeing these companies that are showing that have these huge booths in there. They're giving the, the buyer champagne, right? And and sure. they have a full-on activation. It's just like, wow, you can understand why some of these brands are as big as they are because they're spending the money and the time on these buyers to make sure that they have great placement in these stores. Yeah. And the presentation, right. like you said, and the presentation. Presentation, the product. Yeah. You make the product look sexy, you gonna have a flock of buyers. Yeah, facts, facts. Okay, that's dope. Cause, so is that is that how most trade shows are? It's just a bunch of different like sellers and brands set up trying to, I guess, what is it selling to, because trade shows are more so about selling to like retailers, right? Not necessarily the general public. It's more so about trying to get stores to pick you up, right? Exactly. Yeah. Vendors. Okay. Okay. So gotcha. the vendors would be, would be the brands and the different people trying to sell to the stores and the stores are the ones being, you know, presented to being coerced to buy. I mean, coerced is not a really good word, but like, you know, yeah, yeah. persuaded to, to buy, like, why should I put your product in my store? Got you. Got you. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, that sounds, I've never, I've never been to a trade show. That sounds like, it sounds like it'll be a high energy, like interesting place. Some of them, some of them, yeah. Some yeah. of them, not so much, you know, it, it, it just depends on, you know, what is all being sold at that show. So yeah. the, the hat show is going to be a lot less more popping than the streetwear show. And as it relates yeah. to energy wise anyway. Yeah. Got you. Got you. Okay. Okay. That's dope, man. That's dope, man. Um, so I want to move more so into the, the topic of Paces, man, your book. So can you let us know just what is, what is the, what is Paces about and what are the things that you want people who are reading Paces to take away from it? Great question. So just off the, off the strength of, of what Paces is, and essentially I've been writing it for three years. So I just finished it at the end of last year, COVID 
through a ramp in it where I wasn't able to, to put it out earlier, but now it's here. Essentially what PACES is, the P stands for passion, the A is for action, the C is for courage, and the E is for energy. That's the pace. And everybody really moves at their own. The S okay, okay. is success, which is defined differently by anyone. So literally, like, you use those ingredients to get to that success. So that's, in a nutshell, you know, what the title and, and, and what it stands for and the contents of what's going to be inside of it are the different levels as far as how to prepare you to get to that success. So specifically for me personally, I wrote the book in reverse. And when I say I wrote it in reverse, meaning that I wrote the chapter names out before I even had the chapters done, like written, because I knew that these were the things that I needed to be better to get to the success that I desired. So right. even there's a chapter called health is wealth. And at the time where I wrote that chapter, like I'm going to write something on health being wealth, because at the time I did not feel that way. Mm -hmm. I was eating sloppy, a bunch of grease, you know, not drinking enough water, not exercising, not meditating, not praying, like just different things where taking care of your health is wealth. Because if you don't feel physically fit, you're not going to be able to do your best. You're not going to have that energy to keep going. You're not going to have that courage to face all these obstacles. So mm -hmm. these, these are just, that's just one chapter. But essentially, like each chapter hits on a different point that, that helps you in that journey, in that process. Okay, okay. And so, so the, the bigger the bigger meaning of it or individual meaning to the reader is though that like just breaking kind of those mental barriers or, or, or is it making yourself a better person to put yourself at your pace to be successful that like, am I, am I correct? In, in yeah, like, yeah, no, that, that's, okay. a, that's a, that's a, that's a good way to break it down. Absolutely. Yep. It, okay. it, it puts you mentally on a level to be on pace for your own success. Okay. So then that, that, that gives me another question for you then, man. So how, how important would you say that having a good understanding of yourself is to success? Like, is it, is it like, I, I, I don't want to, I'm trying to figure out a way not to make it sound like so cliche, you know what I'm saying? So like corny, but I, mm -hmm. I have my thoughts on it. You know what I'm saying? I just, I'm curious to like what you think about it. Like how important do you think someone understanding themselves has to do with like their level of success? It's instrumental. Because if you don't know yourself, you're not going to know when it's time for you to leave a situation or when it's time for you to take a risk to be able to continue moving forward. If you don't know yourself, the people around you don't know you either. Right. Yeah. So they won't know how to move around you. They won't know your tendencies. And, and nine times out of 10, if you don't know yourself, you're not going to stay committed to an opportunity. Mm. Right. Again, even when you don't know yourself, you're not going to have that passion to keep going. Like you have to know what you're passionate about that you're going to make a choice to continue doing. Yeah. A lot of times, even in this generation, like people want to be the jack of all trades and do everything. In the beginning, that's cool. That's cute. Because it's like, oh, yeah, I do this. I do this. I do this. I do that. But there's no umbrella effect. Right. So when yeah. I think of when I think of this umbrella effect, I think of, you know, Disney right? Disney or, or whatever big motion picture company, Lion King. Lion King, box office hit. So billions of dollars worldwide. So they can make, they could take a risk on a lower level movie because they have this umbrella effect. You got to think about that on your own accord as it relates to, you know, knowing yourself. Like, what can you really do that's going to make you go to the next level and focus on that? For me, specifically, that one thing at first was merchandising. I was running from it for a long time. I didn't necessarily, because I cared about it. However, at a certain point, I lost the, you know, the, the knack as far as like the desire to want to do it until I refound, you know, how I could make this my umbrella effect and make this like, you know what? I have to take control of this. I can't run away from this. This is my, this is my one thing. But that doesn't stop me now from doing multiple other things because I have this umbrella. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I like the way that you, like the way you explained it to me and Sean was also that having an understanding of our own personalities would like in, improve our business relationship because now we kind of have an understanding of like the way that we think. So just quick story time, quick story time for y'all. So Evan, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Evan, Evan, Evan calls us up one day. Actually, Sean hits me one day. He's like, yo, man. Evan wants to do this personality test with us. You know what I'm saying? He, he was talking to me about like all the benefits it could have for, for our business and we should do it. I've already done it. You should do it. And he shoots me this link at like 11 o'clock at night. I'm like, all right, I'll do it in the morning. You know what I'm saying? 
So we do it. So I do it. Sean does it. We submit it to you. You have your individual calls with us. And to be honest with you, man, I was pretty shocked at like the analysis that came from it and just like how accurate a lot of the things that it talked about as far as our personality and our business relationship. Like it was, it was, it was very spot on. Like I remember telling you like there may be like one thing I disagree with, but everything yeah. else is pretty much there. And we always reference back to that because now so many things in our business relationship make sense. So like, for instance, one thing was like, Sean is a lot more like quick to shit than I am. And so Sean's the type of person who's like, yo, you gotta go, go, go now. And I'm the type of person that's like, yo, bro, hold up, you know what I'm saying? Let's look at it first, so let's make sure shit is cool. And then, uh, you know what I'm saying, let's go out there. And then when we think about it, I think you broke it down. I was like, man, you know, it's good because you need that person that's going to be quick and force you to jump out your comfort zone to do shit. But then you also need a person that's like, all right, but we can't fuck up the quality of it just because it needs to be done. Let's take a second to look back. And when you said that, I was like, damn, that is our whole business relationship <laughs> in a nutshell, man. You know what I'm saying? So ever since then, I've just, and I've seen dozens and dozens of like interviews and clips come up on YouTube, literally talking about that exact same thing since we talked about it, about how un- important it is to understand like the personalities of your employees, the personalities of the people that you're working with, understand like their individual strengths and weaknesses and the things that they're striving for because that shit literally can have an impact on the way your business runs and the, the operation of everything. You know, so it's like it was like, damn bro, Evan, Evan put me onto that, you know? <laughs> like Evan put me onto that game, man. So I mean I, I know and I know business development is, is, is one of your stronger fields. So is that is that something that you would encourage like every team to do? Like to go through that process like, yo, let's sit down and just really evaluate everyone that's part of the team and see like, yo, what are your like what are your core strengths so we can work around that? You know, is that is that something you recommend to people? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because just from you know, I appreciate your testimony or your analogy on it as well, because sometimes when I'm doing these assessments, I never really know later on because if if a if a client doesn't continue to like deep dive and wanna dive deeper, if they got it, they got it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Some people dive deeper just to understand more and go more in depth. So when I haven't heard the perspectives of how it benefits them, it always makes me happy because it's like, I know that I'm doing my job as a coach. Being yeah. a new life coach, it's it, it's definitely one. I think I, I think I did you all's in the first two months of me, you know, being certified to um, administer it. And I was still working and moving towards it. So it's like, I definitely see myself doing these on larger scales with businesses. It's, it's, it's necessary because yeah. now you'll know exactly who you're working with and you won't take things so personal. Yeah. You know, a lot of times in business, we make things about us. It's not about us. If somebody's yeah. personality is A and you're B, there's just naturally going to be some things that y'all do differently. And yeah. y'all need to compromise and figure out how to work in y'all strengths and, you know, sh- stray away from the weaknesses. So yeah. that's, that's something that I, I, I enjoy showing people and breaking down to people so that they can become better themselves because it's a great tool. The assessment yeah. is a great tool and it, and it really shows people who they are. Yeah. Yeah. No, for real. Like anybody watching this man is skeptical. Like I said, like I went into it too. Like, uh, and then after that, I was like, damn bro. No, this is like, this is pretty, this is pretty dare, bro. Like I was like, damn, that is me. That's me, bro. That's me. Okay. It took you 30 minutes. He was 30 minutes in still grilling me. Like, what, what are you about to say? Yeah. I, don't know. <laughs> like, I was like, I, I still kept going though. Listen, listen, bro. You, you, you took it honestly. This is, this gotta be you. I'm going to keep going till it hits. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that, that y'all use it and to help y'all propel y'all business. Cause I see it growing and I'm, I'm excited for y'all, bro. I'm excited. I appreciate it, man. Appreciate it, man. For real. But like I said, I really do like, I give a lot of it to that. Cause like I said, it's one of those things you never think about. Like you never, sometimes you don't think about you and someone else's dynamic until it's put in front of you. And then you're like, oh shit, it is us, bro. Like, it's like looking at yourself, you know what I'm saying? Um, which actually makes me think, man, this, this just kind of came to me right now. Cause I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of tying like the merchandising and, and the, life, the life coach stuff. So I, I say that because I look at like the merchandiser for most artist team usually seems to be one of the, the last things that's added, but it's a very life-changing position. And like, usually merchandise is usually the point where like artists start really like seeing like money, money, you know what I'm saying? Like from what I've seen, it's like, yo, we, the, the streaming money is one thing, but then like they're getting off, you know, 10,000 t-shirts is a whole different feeling, you know what I'm saying? So I, I just makes me wonder if, you know, if you look at it that way and if that feeling of helping the artists around you set that up is what motivates you to want to become a life coach. You know, if I'm wrong, I, I, like, that's, like I said, that's something I just kind of, like, I just thought about that yeah. while I'm talking about it, but 
It seems like so, something that will go together. Not necessarily. Like the merch doesn't tie into the life coaching in any capacity. The merch right, is a okay. medium. It's a me. I look at merchandise as a medium more than just fashion these days for sure. Like, cause you can literally yeah. make statements with your merch. You know what I'm saying? So being able to help put out these messages for artists and, and different people that, that I work with or things of that nature, it's, it's a great feeling to just help others that want to put out a message that yeah. can encompass the life coaching. But as far as the coaching goes, I'm a manager. So I was already coaching period. So being able to guide somebody in a way that helps them propel in life was really more so of why I was like, this makes sense. Being able to coach is you're being looked at as this credible figure or somebody who's trusted that can help me go in the right direction. So even as you yeah. think of like a mentor or you're, you're trusting that they've walked a certain walk and they're giving you feedback that's going to make sure that you're walking in the right direction. Yeah. That's a very, you know, safe space. Like someone that, 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 it's a lot of responsibility. Yeah, I didn't even so, think of it like that. It is it's very I never thought of it like that. Like the role of a mentor. A mentor basically is a life coach, right? Someone yeah, walking you through yeah. their experiences too. I never thought of it like that. So Absolutely. so I mean so so I mean is there is there a particular that's the way I'm trying, I'm not trying to ask this question. Is there like a, a particular type of person or a particular point that you would say someone should have? that type of person around them you know what I'm saying like let's say whether you look at like a mentor or like a life coach you know we can't we can't denounce like the value of having somebody that's a little bit ahead of you in something you know so like I guess for the life the life coaching specifically like what types of people do do you think benefit from your services the most I guess that's what I'm trying to ask like what type of people do you think come to you and benefit from you the most you know oh people that want it people that want to go to the next level because there's people that will do a consult and, and see themselves and reject it, you know, and that's okay. You know, maybe you're not ready for all that information because it can be a lot to see yourself in the mirror. Like you said earlier, some people yeah. can't necessarily deal with that and be ready to take the next step to move forward and how to really assess it and make the necessary changes to go to the next level. The people yeah. that I'm most interested in is the people that are willing to, to do the work. Are you ready to get out in the field and do the burpees and, and do the squats and lift the weights and get in the gym, not, not literally, but do the work so that you can grow. Because sometimes, you know, we're human. Sometimes it may not be the right timing that you feel. However, if you're ready to do the work, let's get it. Yeah, yeah, I like that. That's dope. Anybody that wants it, bro. Anybody that wants it, that's who needs it. I, I like that, I like that. Um, so, I mean, I think, I mean, that was, that's pretty much, everything that like I had bro like you answered every question I had like I said I'm a I'm a me and Sean are walking testimonies of what you do man we vouch for everything you do 100% man that's why I wanted to bring you here and like I said that whole thing that you taught us about about understanding dynamics and personalities and how to face business bro that shit just like lit a light bulb in my head man like I literally look at all of our employees that same way like man let me get to know your personality or your personality and you know this person is great at this because they're naturally xyz been like great example. We have one guy that works with us. Like he likes to talk a lot. You know what I'm saying he's borderline talks too much, but he's a great sales guy because he he can talk. You know what I'm saying it's like, like you know yeah. that's what we put him at. You're like bro, you want to talk? Go talk all day, bro. You can talk for eight hours a day, bro. Do your thing. <laughs> and he bring the sales back. That, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. how you exactly. keep the company rolling. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's that's fine, bro. So tell everybody, man, where they can find you, how they can contact you if they if they want to reach out to you, and then man, um. Actually, yeah, let's do that first. I'll save my last question. But let everybody know where they can find you um, and how they can contact you if they want to, you know, show you that they're serious and get things going. For sure, man. So you can find me at uh, on Instagram, of course, paces.worldwide. Mm. And uh, my personal page is I Set Trends, I-S-E-T-R-E-N-D-S. And also, if you were looking for coaching or wanted to purchase the book, that's dropping on September 1st. It's www.pacesworldwide.com. All right, fire, fire, man. So last question for you, bro. Last question. What's, mm-hmm. what's the best piece of advice you've gotten? And what is the biggest life lesson you've learned? Mm. So two questions. What is the best piece of advice I've ever, yeah. ever? It is two questions. Yeah, you're right. It is two questions. What's okay. the best piece of advice you feel like you've ever gotten? And what's the 
best or biggest life lesson you feel like you learned? Okay, so as it relates to business, the best piece of advice that I've ever gotten was that sales is the heartbeat of any company. Mm. And I say this in, in many other, uh, it just hit me so crazy because again, I studied public relations and communications. I was yeah. getting ready to be in that field, in that realm at an agency, suited up, clean face, you know, in the yeah. office, corporate, whatever. And that one statement let me know that if I go that path, I'm not going to become the CEO or the executive or the person that I need to become because communications and PR is not going to bring you to the top of the boardroom because your opinion is not, you know, received the same way as the sales guys and the accounting guys and the finance guys and the people making the money decisions. So again, if there's no sales, my job doesn't exist. There is no yeah. public relations. There is no marketing fancy campaign there is you know all of that's yeah. getting cut to go back to sales so that is the the best piece of advice that i've ever gotten and it literally shifted my life i literally went from taking a safe job making a good 50 60k a year out of college whatever it was to interning with no real path and i made something with it so that 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 literally was the best piece of advice okay um, okay and the second question was the most. Uh, the biggest, the biggest or best life lesson. Oh, I don't want to say biggest. I don't like the way this word. The best life lesson you feel like you've learned so far. That's a good one too. Just off the top of my head, being present. Mm -hmm. Like much of my life, or I can't say much, much of my adult life was spent, you know, drinking and drugging and, you know, not there, right? Yeah. Like my experiences in life, it revolved around drinking, like celebrating my successes, I was drinking, celebrating my downs, I was drinking. When I was bored, I was drinking. No, so really I was not present, I was not there. Now that I'm here, you know, I have my mental more intact, I'm, I, I'm more clear, I can be present. I could go take a walk, and I could see butterflies, I could see the ants, I can hear the birds, I can smell the trees. I'm so present and I can accept these moments and I can enjoy them and internalize them and just enjoy the little things. Because sometimes in life we take things so serious. Sometimes we don't even smile. I smile so much now and that's because I'm so present. So that, that, that's something that just was on my heart just now, be present. Yeah, no, that's fire, man. That's A1 advice. Both of those are A1 advice, man. Appreciate you again, bro. That's Evan, you guys. Make sure you go follow him at I Set Trends at Paces Worldwide. Paces dropping September 1st. September 1st. Definitely going to be checking that joint out. And appreciate you again, bro, for real, for taking the time out to have this conversation with me. Absolutely. Appreciate you, man. See you yeah, next no time. Problem. Hey, bro. See you next time, bro. And as always, if you feel like you learned anything, make sure you like and share this video. Hit those post notifications as well as it really helps the channel out. Once again, my name is Corey. This has been my guy, Evan. We will see y'all next time. Peace. Peace.